Dispatcher going up. Well, I guess that'll do. Hello everyone, Uncle Dane here with another episode of Engineering 101. Today we're going to be talking about dealing with spies. Now, I know in my experience, I found that the best way to deal with spies is just stand still. Turn your back away from the spy without doing anything else. I promise, it's totally the best hey, strategy. what are you doing in here? Get out of here, you dirty spy man. Get out of here, go! Shoot, Whoa. shoot! Whoa. Get out of here, get, go! Go, get out. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Uh, anyway, that fake Uncle Dane was right about one thing at least. Today we're going to be talking about spies and how you, as an engineer, can do your best to combat them. The feud between spies and engineers has been around since the beginning of time, so you can imagine that anything I tell you in this video isn't exactly revolutionary. In fact, the guide to dealing with those sneaky Frenchmen has been around longer than I have even been playing TF2. Uh, you know, I'm pretty sure I have it around here someplace. Let me go check, actually. Here in my garage, we'll go through all this junk here. It's got to be in here somewhere. You know, some of my engineer. Oh, you know, I'll just keep that in there. You never know when you're getting one of those. That is not mine. That's obviously somebody else's. Actually, I think. Oh, I think this is it right here. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, this should hold over nicely. I think this actually still holds a bit of weight. All these years later. Howdy, partner. If you're watching this video, let me be the first to say, congratulations! You've recently installed the team-based first-person shooter Team Fortress 2, and have decided to play as the Engineer class. Can I go play a game now? Hold on there, champ. You've got a lot to learn about the things that can make playing as the Engineer a daunting task. As you can see by this chart... <clears throat> chart. The Engineer and his buildings are countered by a lot of scary things in this game, but perhaps the trickiest character to interact with in Team Fortress 2 is the Spy. The Spy is equipped with not only the power to render himself completely invisible, but he also has the Electro Sapper, which he can easily place on the Engineer's buildings to render them completely useless. So how do we deal with such a powerful, unseen, yet smelly force of nature like the Spy? There are so many different ways for your Engineer rump to be handed to you on a silver platter by a Spy, that it can be difficult to remember remember everything. That's why we recommend using the phrase SPIES! W what's that? Once you understand SPIES! You'll understand just how simple it can be to counteract a spy's common methods of engagement. But what does SPIES mean? I don't know. I thought you were gonna tell me that. It's actually a carefully organized code. Watch closely. Stay away. Pretend you're busy. Awareness. Help from your teammates and the sapper technique. In order to fully understand spies, we'll have to take a look at each individual category carefully, starting with the first letter. Stay away. The common household spy is armed with a foldable butterfly knife with a handle clip and a clip point blade. While it may look small and relatively harmless, when attacking from behind, the spy's knife can take away 600% of the enemy's total health in one hit. That's a lot of damage. So it can go without saying that turning your back to a spy is an invitation to be killed right there on the spot. However, it should be made clear that because of the way that Team Fortress 2's hitboxes work, you don't have to be completely facing 180 degrees away from the spy in order to be backstabbed. <laughs> That's a load of bull. So when you take into account the unreliability of the backstab, how ping differences affect the outcome, and how much backpedaling messes with your own hitbox, the safest way to avoid being killed by a spy that you can see is to simply stay away from him. Do not engage with a spy in close combat if you can avoid it. Very good! Pretend you're busy. A good spy won't just run into your nest all willy-nilly expecting to be greeted with exposed backs and unattentive pie bros. No, no. The expert spy main will always wait until the opportune moment to strike, preferably when your back is turned. An engineer in particular has a lot of things on his mind when maintaining a nest, and the spy certainly knows it. So a typical spy will wait until you're preoccupied with something such as upgrading a building or wrangling down some sniper in the distance before he will uncloak and attempt to murder you and your toys as well. 
While this situation is sometimes unavoidable, and it's always a good idea to have the possibility of an ambush in the back of your mind at all times, you can often bait a nearby spy into making his move prematurely by simply pretending to be busy. That's right, pretend like you're doing something important. Stand completely still while building a dispenser. Look intensely preoccupied by something on the ground. Then, after a few seconds, turn around and check to see if anyone has suddenly appeared behind you, expecting to stab your unaware backside. This situation is often much preferred over actually being ambushed when you're actually preoccupied with something. So if you have a moment to pretend like that moment is now, when it actually isn't, you can control when the ambush happens, making it that much easier to counter it. You see? Spies aren't the only ones who can trick their enemies. Awareness! Just like teamwork, movement, and game sense, awareness is a core part of honing your individual skill in Team Fortress 2. But a large part of what makes a spy a dangerous class is how effective it can be when facing an unaware team. Spy checking is the most common and easiest form of awareness that a team can employ. And no, it's not just the pyro's job, it's everyone's job to check for spies. But even past spy checking, there are many things that you can do to correctly identify when there is or isn't the possibility of a spy creeping around here. The most common ways to identify suspicious activity includes Teammates who aren't firing their weapon or unnecessarily have their melee weapon out. Teammates with missing body parts or incorrect weapons for their class. Teammates who die to minimal damage or fall damage can indicate a dead ringer. Listen for decloaking sounds or any unusual sounds at all. Listen for spy responses or look at the chat for enemy team responses. Press tab to keep track of when a known spy player is alive or when they ha are dead. Watch for mysteriously disappearing ammo or health packs. Watch for mysteriously opening shuttered doors. Watch for clones because clones are never to be trusted. Politely ask every individual teammate if they are a spy. Help from your teammates. Believe it or not, the origins of the name Team Fortress 2 are quite straightforward. The name is derived from the fact that you are playing on a team which is trying to capture or defend a fortress. The reasoning behind the two is unknown and has baffled video game historians for centuries. So as you can tell, the team aspect of this game is very important. The members of your team can help you complete tasks, including defend your precious nest from the prying knives and sappers of the enemy spies. Just take a look at these teammates. Hmm. Poised. Confident. And a smile that says, Ain't no darn spy getting near my engineers. They've got the makings of a great team. However, not every team you get paired with for the evening is going to automatically be on board with lending you a hand in the moment of need. So we suggest pressing the C key and then 1 or politely requesting assistance using the chat feature. Don't forget to use the team-only channel. Hopefully, if your teammates have their computer monitors turned on, they will assess the situation and come to your aid when an enemy spy is harassing your buildings and threatening your well-being. Fantastic teamwork! The Sapper Technique the old one-two smack, as some of the old-timers like to call it, has been a valuable procedure that engineers have used time and time again in order to combat the spy's sap-and-shoot tactics. It's been passed down from generation to generation, and today, we're going to be passing that knowledge down to you. When a spy saps a sentry gun, his typical method of operation is to try and see how long he can get away with spamming the sapper without being retaliated against. If the engineer refuses to engage with the spy, and only attempts to keep removing the sapper, the the battle for who can click the mouse buttons the fastest will have begun. Instead, the engineer should take the relationship to the next level and begin to make an effort to kill the spy. Given that at this point the spy doesn't simply cloak and sneak away like a little bitch, you'll now have a 1v1 fight on your hands. But this 1v1 isn't your typical DM fest. This will require a test in multitasking as well, for you have a building to save and a spy to murder. In order to make it harder for the spy to just keep applying the sapper while you advance on him with a weapon, Weapon. Simply hit the sapped building one time before switching to your primary and firing at the intruder. After you've killed or otherwise chased away the enemy spy, you may now fully remove the sapper with ease. This technique can come in useful during most encounters with the type of spies who like to sap a sentry gun and then follow it up with a few well-aimed revolver shots. But remember, how you react will influence the spy to respond with his own counters. So if you look like you're choosing to go for the unsap, the spy will then prepare to resap the gun. 
However, because the gun still has a sapper on it after the first hit, his sapper will not be reapplied, which will give you an opportunity to retaliate with your primary. In this moment, the spy will now realize that you are choosing to participate in a one-on-one -on -one deathmatch, so his response will be to back away while firing his weapon at you. If you take advantage of this window of opportunity where the spy is both undisguised and backing away from the sentry gun, you can then turn around and hit the sapper for the second time, which will then allow the sentry to finish the job. See? The spy isn't the only one with a few tricks up his sleeve. So there you have it, the dissected code of SPIES! Don't worry, we realize that it all might be a lot of information to take in at once. It really sounds like a lot of- Your mother! Sounds like a lot of- Your mother! Sounds like a- Your mother! Your mother! Sounds like a lot of your mother to make over a silly little nest, right? <laughs> Wrong. There is one more important tool in the engineer's arsenal that can greatly assist in keeping those pesky spies away for good. That's right, it's time for the moment you've all been waiting for! Bah. The Southern Hospitality! While it provides no glorious RNG of random crits, and you horribly insta-die to pyros, the Southern Hospitality is the spy hunter's wrench of choice. If you are ever able to land a hit on a spy, their ability to cloak and escape will be much harder because of the bleed effects highlighted animation, even on invisible players. But that's not everything the public would like to hear about the Southern Hospitality. No, the information you seek is much simpler of a request. From the early stages of this humble YouTube channel, the comment section has cried out for the opinion on this wrench provided by none other than Uncle Dane. And so today, in this very video, you will learn Uncle Dane's opinion on the spy countering. Fire amplifying. Fair and balanced straight upgrade of a wrench that is the Southern Hospitality. Are you ready? Yes! Are you sure? Yes! Oh my god, yes! Okay! Uncle Dane's opinion on the Southern Hospitality is...